What's up guys? Welcome back to another one where we are going to be looking at the top seven coding books that I recommend. So the other week I did a video on the top seven computer science books that I recommend. If you guys haven't seen that, you guys should go check that out. But I did say if that video did well, I would be making this one. And sure enough, you guys did your part. That video did great. And I'm a man of my word. So today we're going to be doing the top seven coding books. And if this video does well, I'll do another video on, let's say, the top online programming books that I recommend. So make sure you guys hit that like button so I know you guys are enjoying these types of videos and would like to see more. So let's get into our list here. These are in no particular order and I do have a link to every book listed in the description as well as the comments. So let's jump into book number one. The first book we have is Problem Solving with C++ by Walter Savage. This was the book that started it all for me. C++ was my first language and this was the book that I learned off of. It was assigned to me when I was taking a C++ class at Santa Monica College, which is a junior college in Santa Monica. And it covers every concept you'd want to learn for this language. And it's called problem solving with C++. So it's not just like a lot of other books where it's like, hey, here's just how the concept and here's like a lame example that doesn't really actually show you how to apply it. I had a blast reading this book. For me, it was my first time learning how to code. So everything was new to me. And I kind of like almost wish I could like forget it and like go back and relearn everything. It's kind of like if you've ever had a movie that you really like and you've seen it a bunch of times, you're like, man, I wish I could just like forget it and like go back and watch it again from the beginning. So this is a book that I would definitely recommend to someone, especially if it's your first language and you're you know trying to learn C++. This has my thumbs up. All right, the next one we have, you guys are getting a two for one here. It's JavaScript and jQuery. Now, before I get roasted in the comments for recommending jQuery, just Hear me out. So the book itself is split into two parts. Uh, the first half of the book is learning how to write front end code with JavaScript. No fancy frameworks or libraries, just vanilla JavaScript. Uh, you learn, you first learn the language itself, like functions, loops, objects. Then you learn about the DOM or the document object model, which is basically the structure of the HTML on your browser. Then you learn about things like, you know, browser specific attributes like events, like when a user clicks a button, adds something to a list or turn that button red, something like that. And the second half of the book is jQuery. Now you get even more comfortable with working with the DOM. And that's why I feel like jQuery is a great learning tool. And even though it is kind of dying, I think it's a it's a great way to get familiar with with JavaScript frameworks, especially if you're new to front end development and you really learn the, the power of using a JavaScript framework over just using the language by itself. And it's a pretty easy read. I was, you know, speed reading through everything. And this book also has kind of like a, a sister book to it called uh, HTML and CSS. So, uh, you know, if you read those these two books, uh, you really get the core fundamentals for front end development. The next book I have is JavaScript. The Good Parts by Douglas Crockford. This is really a, one of the all-time classic books. Uh, so the language of JavaScript is very flawed from a po fundamental point of view. However, there are some good parts to it, hence the name of the book. And uh, this pretty much gives you a subset of JavaScript that you should be using while still being able to do everything you need to. And it's, I mean, it's like that in every language, you know, and, and whenever you're coding, say in Java or Python, no one's ever going to use the entire the entirety of the language. Uh, everyone just kind of picks a subset. Like for me, you know, I prefer doing you know for loops over while loops. So you do that in any language, anyways. So this is saying, hey, this is the good subset of JavaScript that you should be using. You also get to learn about how messed up the scope is in JavaScript. So uh, yeah. Uh, have fun with that. But this is a must read if you want to take JavaScript seriously, which if you're a front end or full stack or you work in Node, you, you probably should be taking it seriously. So yeah, definitely a, a must read for JavaScript. So that leads us to our question of the day, which is what is a coding or programming book that you recommend? Or, or maybe not a book, maybe a online course. Let me know in the comments. All right, next up we have Java, a beginner's guide, sixth edition. I gave a ton of my Java knowledge to this book. If you watch my channel, you know Java is one of my main languages, but that wasn't always the case. I started learning it in grad school. I kind of got thrown into an Android development class. So, you know, with no background in Java or Android. And I don't know, there was just uh, something about this book, the, the way the examples were explained, things just kind of clicked and made sense for me. And I still often go back to this book when I try, you know, when I want to like brush up on some concepts. There are two versions of this book. Uh, this is the beginner's guide, which 
is pretty much all you'll need for developing in Java, but there is also a longer version, which is supposed to be like the entire Java reference guide. Uh, don't read that entire book because it's like well over a thousand pages, but that's a good book to use if you ever want to go back for reference. But yeah, if you want to learn Java, definitely pick up this book. The next book we have is Python Crash Course by Eric Mays. This book is called Crash Course, but it's like over 500 pages, so it's not very crash coursey. But a large portion of this book is probably stuff you can skip, like how to like install Python or what text editor to use. I don't know why there's a chapter on that. But the part where you're actually learning just the core concept of the language is like 200 pages, which if you factor in like a lot of code examples, is really not that long. And I felt like it was pretty easy to pick up, especially if you ha already have knowledge in a C-like language like Java or C++. And then the rest of the book is using Python with like an API framework like Django or using the game development for Pygame. I skipped those two chapters because I didn't really feel like I needed it, but I'm sure they're solid as well. So yeah, a book that I would recommend for someone who's looking to pick up Python in a short amount of time. All right, the next book we have is Getting Mean with Mongo, Express, Angular, and Node. So this book covers four technologies and programmers like to be cool and make cool acronyms for a tech stack they're using. So we have Angular, which is a front end framework developed by Google. The N stands for Node, which is a platform for running JavaScript without the need of the browser basically allowing you to use JavaScript to write your backend code. The E stands for Express, which is a package that Node uses for setting up your endpoints in an API. And finally, MongoDB is a NoSQL database. So yeah, you have your front end, your back end, and your database. Uh, so everything you need to, to create a full stack web application, which is what you do in this book. And for me, after reading this book, this is really when I got into full stack development and, it, and I decided uh, that's what I wanna do for my career. So obviously I would recommend this book, right? Mm, not so fast. The problem I have with this book is I'm not a huge fan of Angular. Um, I would recommend something like a Mern stack, which replaces the Angular with React, which is probably the top JavaScript framework in the world right now. Or maybe something with Vue, which is another solid framework. Uh, but nonetheless, this is still one of my favorite books. All right, next up we have iOS programming by the Big Nerd Ranch. I always have a hard time saying that for some reason. And it's by Joe Conway and Aaron Hillglass. So this company publishes books related to app development. Uh, they also do books on Android, which is really just as good. I could have done that either book really. But, and I'm pretty sure they do release a new version of the book with every major upgrade with iOS or Android. So they pretty much release a book every year, which is pretty awesome because then you can keep your code up to date. But then that also means you have to buy a new version every year. So that kind of sucks. But the Kindle version is only like $23, so it's not that bad. So you start out by creating a simple iOS app, and then there's a large section solely de dedicated to learning Swift, which is the language you use to build iOS apps. And then it just gets into all of the different iOS concepts and components. So the, the Big Nerd Ranch is really my recommendation for anything iOS or Android related. All right, that is the top seven coding books that I recommend. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this video. If you did, uh, you know, make sure you hit that like button. It takes a lot of prep to go through videos like this. So um, yeah, and also if you do like it, I will make another follow-up video talking about my favorite online coding courses. So yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and as always, keep on coding.